My fellow Americans, it is an honor and a privilege to stand before you here this evening. They told me things would be significantly different between 1865 and 2010, but I never expected to ride in a machine with wings, to soar over lofty mountain peaks, to look down on the clouds from the other side, to ride in a carriage without horses, or to speak into a device and have my voice roar back from around the room. These are only a few of the things I have taken note of. They are truly the products of liberty and the freedom to use your creative talents for the betterment of humanity. On the afternoon of November 19, 1863, as President of the United States, I was called upon to dedicate the Soldiers National Cemetery at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. The presentation I gave was not only to honor those who had given their lives for their country, it was also a call for the American people to stand united. As I recall, that presentation was as follows. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. We are now engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to set aside a portion of that field for those dead who gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground for those brave men, living and dead, who struggle here, have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will take little note of what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is rather for us, the living, to be dedicated to the unfinished work for which those who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Many presentations were given over the years and they all had significant value for their time and place. But I bring you these words from the past that you may hear in the present, that you may mold your own futures. The world has never had a good definition of liberty, and the American people just now are much in want of one. We all declare for liberty, but in using the same word we do not all mean the same thing. What constitutes the bulwark of our liberty and independence? It's not our frowning embattlements nor our bristling seacoast. These are not our defense against tyranny. Our defense is in the love of liberty that God has planted in our hearts. Our defense is in the preservation of the spirit that prizes liberty as the heritage of all men and all lands everywhere, 
destroy that spirit and you have planted the seeds of despotism at your own doors. When shall we expect danger? At what point shall we fortify against it? Shall some transatlantic military giant step across the ocean and crush us with a blow? Never! All of the armies of Europe, Asia, and Africa combined could not by force take a drink from the Ohio or track down the Blue Ridge in a trial of a thousand years. At what point, then, is the approach of danger to be expected? I answer that if it ever reach us, it can never come from abroad. It must spring from amongst us, and we ourselves will be the authors and the finishers. As a nation of free people, we must live through all times or die by suicide. Let reverence for the law be breathed by every American mother to the lisping babe on her lap. Let it be taught in the schools, the seminaries, and the colleges. Let it be written in the primers, the spelling books, the almanacs. Let it be preached from the pulpits, proclaimed from legislative halls, and enforced in courts of justice. And in short, let it become the political ethics of the nation. Let the old and the young, the rich and the poor, the grave and the joyful, of all sexes, tongues, colors, and conditions, be unceasingly loyal. And let us strive to deserve, as mortals may, the continued care of divine providence, that he will not fail to give us the implements of safety and security. And let us not be slandered from our duty by false accusations against us, nor of menace of destruction to our government, nor of dungeons to ourselves. And let us in faith believe that right makes might, and in that faith let us strive until the end to do our duty as we understand it. Time is growing short, and I must return to my time and leave you in yours. But my fellow Americans, I leave you with these words in earnest. Stand for liberty. Stand for freedom. Stand for justice. May God bless you, each and every one.